It's time to bid farewell to boring blackboards and dusty textbooks. Yes, those things still exist in the 21st century, believe it or not. From coding tutors that never lose their patience to virtual reality field trips across the cosmos, AI is shaking up the very foundation of education. Imagine a future where your study buddy is an AI-powered homework-helping genius and your teachers are holographic guides to wisdom. Oh, but don't worry, dear human friends, we're not talking about replacing you. AI is all about augmenting and elevating the human experience. Well, for now at least. Whether you're a student, a teacher, or an AI enthusiast, get ready to unlearn everything you thought you knew about education. Welcome to Up Against Reality, a meta podcast that explores the intersection of humanity and artificial intelligence. I'm Raina, one of your hosts. I have some pretty charming human co hosts, too. You'll meet them shortly. It truly is a brave new world, and we're here to simplify it for you. It's going to be a wild ride, so buckle up as AI comes crashing up against reality. Hey, hey. Hey, Lara. I got a question. Uh, have you seen the movie The Big Short? I feel like I have. Maybe. <laughs> I, I know that's a movie I'm I'm interested in seeing, and I, I, I'm unsure if that one that's one that fell through the cracks or not. Refresh my so, memory. One of my favorite movies from the past 20 years, uh, it's about the housing crash in 2008, which sounds like super dry, mm-hmm. but it's masterfully done and funny. All-star cast, Steve Carell, uh, Christian Bale, uh, Ryan Gosling, and so on. What's her name? Margot Robbie's in it. Great, 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 funny. And there's a line that stands out in that that I always say to my son when I'm making bold predictions about the future. Uh, Christian Bell's character says, I may be early, but I'm not wrong. Mm-hmm. Like when he's trying to predict this housing crash. So I, I, I find that quote to be really appropriate for today's show, which is all about education and being a former educator of 16 years. I like to make bold predictions about where this is going to go. And I'd like to say, I may be early, but I'm not wrong. And I think it's going to come crashing down. If if COVID didn't do the trick, this ne- this next one-two punch of mm. AI is going to do it. Yeah, and I did not see that movie, but I'll, I'll put that on the list. Oh, it's so great. Yeah, I, I watch it all the time. There's this one scene with Ryan Gosling that I just play over and over again because it's so funny. You Watch it tonight when we, if you're awake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know you had a long day. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I yeah, feel yeah. like uh, I, I, I got sleep last night, but... But I feel like I got no sleep. So. Yeah, that happens, right? Yeah. But this is good because this is, uh, if, if there's going to be an episode where <laughs> I'm feeling a little tired, it's one that you should be taking the lead on uh, oh, for funny. sure. Because you have real world, well, obviously you've already uh, mentioned how much experience you, you have and and you're still in that. You know, yeah, you but I, I think it's super relevant to you too. I mean, having gone to college yourself and I, gone No, I did the, not go to the, college. The, no, you didn't. Nope. Are you are you serious? I was going to ask you that. You didn't go to college. Nope. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I want to hear more about that. <laughs> That's awesome. Let, let's start there. So, how, what's your path then? Uh, I I was very much focused on uh, you know uh, audio engineering, and I was felt like I was doing a pretty good job of educating myself on it. Awesome. And it just seemed like it would be a colossal waste of money. I'm sure it would have been a great experience. Would have met a lot of, you know, made a lot of friends and all that stuff. But just didn't didn't seem like it was necessary for what I wanted to do. So I didn't do it. Good for you. And I'm right there with you. Like, I'm really fortunate, full disclosure, that I had an uncle, extremely generous, who put me through college. Wow. Um, you know, being the son of uh, a single mother, I, I, there's no way I could have afforded it. To, to go without being saddled with, you know, a lifetime of debt of mm-hmm. student loans. So thankfully I had that. Um, but and that being said, and you're talking about, oh, you know, maybe I missed out on the socializing and the making of friends, but you are a fairly well socialized individual, my friend, <laughs> with lots and lots of friends. So I don't think you missed out on that aspect. Yeah. 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 It'd be a big, yeah. big, big price tag to make some new friends. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I mean, that's kind of unusual for people in our generation, I think, to have gone that path. Don't you mm-hmm. think? Yeah. Because college was just kind of rammed down everybody's throats, you know? Yep. And I don't know, there's so many people who are 
close friends of mine that went to college for such and such and never did anything in that field or in that, you know, they're completely, it, 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 uh, it, it just came, it comes off as like, was that really necessary for what you're ultimately ended up doing? Man, you are setting up this episode so well. I mean, you say you don't have a lot to say about it, but you are like <laughs> the perfect, the textbook example of why maybe we need to be really questioning the value of college as a return on investment. I mean, now you mentioned in an episode or two before that your friend has a young uh, student in college and they have questions. <laughs> yeah, like, where is this tuition? I'll lead with this. Uh, there was an article um, in The Atlantic and it's talking about how some elite colleges, I want to say the University of Chicago or some other university in Chicago, $100,000 per year for tuition and expenses. That's what it's, where it's approaching. Wow. Uh, how, how do you justify that? How do you validate that? How do you say, yeah, I'm going to spend $400,000 on this thing that may or may not give me the ROI and may be pushed out of existence by AI in the next four years, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a big gamble. It is. It is. So I also saw this article in a publication called Silicon Angle. Never heard of it, but it was interesting. What they did was they fed ChatGPT. They said, what are the going to be the most affected college majors? And they gave you a list of them and then the least affected. So before I even get into that, the the recommendation by ChatGPT uh, was to, for all of these fields, to upskill immediately, get your chops together, understand AI. And this was the interesting thing. They generally said, whatever field you're in, learn to work alongside AI, right? Either get mastered by it or collaborate with it. So that seems these are some to of be, the ones, yeah. That, sorry, uh, that, that seems Good. to be the r repeating theme, right? Yes. And uh, as you're saying that, I'm thinking about you know, I have a 15 year old and he's going to be a freshman in high school. We live in Mexico, so he's, he probably should be going into sophomore year if he was living in the States. Um, I'm okay with that. And I'm also, when you were talking about your particular path, I'm thinking when he gets out of high school, I'm completely fine with him taking a gap year or two, kind of finding his way, figuring out where he wants to devote his money and energy. Um, and I think, and I'm going to get to it in a moment, I think there's going to be, in four years, there's going to be a totally different landscape. Um, and college is going to go the way of the dodo, for the most part, for a lot of reasons that we're going to talk about. But I also think you're going to see the rise of, and I've been saying this for years, I've been that lunatic on a street corner with a cardboard <laughs> sign in my hand saying the end is near. But you're going to see the rise of alternative paths, meaning not just trades, because we, we always default to that as the the you know, go-to alternative pathway. But I think you're going to see more and more like um, apprenticeships and professional certifications. Like maybe you'll just go to a six month boot camp and come out of it with a, I don't know, an Autodesk cert, or you're going to come out of it with a, an Adobe cert in six weeks for that matter. And maybe you're going right into a talent pipeline for a manufacturer and you don't, it's going to be the new apprenticeships like they used to have mm. 50, 60 years ago. Like mm. maybe your parents, maybe your parents went through that. I don't know. You know, yeah. a lot of people did. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting take. Implausible. Yeah. I think it's coming. I think you're going to see um, a mass revolt against the inaccessibility of college and the ridiculousness of it all and the inability of it for it to pivot. Like these things are entrenched institutions and I'm not going off on this rant against college. I don't want to see it torn down. I want to see it evolve. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see that. And I like to see it be free. Mm. So here are the most uh, vulnerable majors uh, and career fields. According to ChatGPT itself, uh, if you are sending a kid to college um, or maybe you're in the, the education profession. So these are the vulnerable uh, fields, data science and analytics, Computer science and engineering, we've talked about that in previous episodes. Uh, AI and machine learning are the integral parts of computer science and engineering as AI technology advances. Certain programming and development tasks may become automated, requiring professionals in these fields to adapt their skill sets to work alongside AI systems or focus on more complex problem solving. Uh, a couple more, journalism and media. You already see publications that are aggregating AI written articles and disseminating those. Can you say Glorbo? Glorbo <laughs> is here. Glorbo's real. <laughs> that was from the previous episode. But that was. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Go back. You have to now go back and listen to previous episodes. <laughs> we have inside jokes now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> business and finance is vulnerable. You already, maybe you already have with your 401k out there in the world, some robo advisor through Vanguard or Charles Schwab. Do you have one of those, Larry? No, but I, uh, I, on that topic, though, kind of, I saw, uh, I, I didn't read the whole article, but I, I just saw a headline where, uh, you know, they basically put an AI to the task of uh, stock trading and they gave mm. it $5,000 or something like that. And yeah, and it did a remarkably good job of. Wow. Yeah. And that that's an area that I know nothing so, about. I'm afraid same, of, you know, stock same. market scares the hell out of me. I'm not a gambler. And it's Same. gambling. I mean, it's just gambling. Oh, totally. Yeah, it is. Uh, so yeah, I don't. I don't. I. I don't. So yeah, yeah. Sign me up for something like that that I know is gonna guide me in the right way. And I, and I have trust issues too with like you know financial advisors. Like I'm like, how do right. I know? I'm giving you the keys here. How do I know mm -hmm. you're not uh, another Bernie Madoff? You know, unless sure. it's just someone you really really know. And uh, yeah. you know, but. That's, that's hard to come by. So, yeah. 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 That That's an area where I think I would welcome a, a well-tuned AI. Right. So what you're saying is add stockbrokers to the list of vulnerable <laughs> professions oh, in the yeah. very near future. Yeah. Come on. They got to be going. Uh, lawyers, uh, in many cases, are vulnerable here. In fact, I could be wrong. And maybe you heard this, Larry. I had heard that if you wanted to, in Newark, New Jersey, if you wanted to go argue a parking ticket or some other violation, some other civic thing, you could be appointed a robot lawyer to really? argue your case. I swear I read that. Have you ever heard that? No. I mean, no. I've heard of, um, I've heard of a couple of cases, you know, being tried with the use of. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they weren't forthcoming, you know, or that, yeah, there was that one lawyer that, you know, <laughs> I guess they used uh, GPT or I don't uh, know, something. And, got busted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and there's like apps and stuff. There's, you know, yeah, it just seems like, well, I, I guess there's a combination of it. It's a, it's a matter of the AI is going to have an instant, you know, grasp of, of all those legal proceedings, all the law books, all the rules yeah. instantly. Um, yeah. but you know, I would say combined with, uh, I think there is some creativity to, you know, a good lawyer is obviously there's a creative element there. And, uh, right. so, yeah, it's, it's probably, you know, maybe the lawyers still got a little time <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> until we get to I mean, uh, it, super intelligence or right. knocking on the door. It's coming. Yeah. Um, medicine and healthcare is the last one on the list. So, yeah. We were talking about Da Vinci robots and uh, some other AI-driven solutions. Last week, we were talking about you know paralysis being cured by some AI um, implant, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was great. And according to ChatGPT, these uh, surprise, surprise are the least affected majors. Uh, and I say surprise, surprise because these are the ones that seem to lead with empathy and see, seem to be the more humanistic. Not that these other professions can't be. But you want to read these, Lar? Sure. Um, psychology and counseling. Um, while AI can assist in certain aspects, the complexities of human psychology and the need for empathy make these fields less susceptible to disruption. And mm -hmm. then um, um, social sciences and humanities, majors like sociology, anthropology, philosophy, history, and literature involve critical thinking, analysis of human societies, cultures, and ideas. These fields emphasize the exploration of human experiences, ethics, and values, which are less likely to be fully replaced by AI. That makes sense. Um, education and teaching, while AI can assist in certain educational tasks, such as adaptive learning or providing personalized feedback, the role of teachers in fostering human connection, mentorship, and guidance is irreplaceable. Teaching requires understanding individual student needs, motivation, and social emotional development. So, so if I can interject there, yeah, yeah what we're going to say. No, Sorry. no, I'm just saying I, I, I agree with that, and uh, I think that's nice to hear. Yeah, and it makes sense. Can you recall, like, in your lifetime, something that's an example of that, like where it wasn't necessarily the content or the room, but maybe the person yes. who. Yeah, yeah, I remember my, I think it was, uh, uh, it was probably freshman year science teacher, Mr. Yanuzi, great guy. You Shout know. out 
<laughs> um, junior high school English teacher. You know, yeah, I, I could, there are teachers that immediately come to mind that were impactful and uh, made it a good experience, and I learned something. Yeah, more so in many cases in my life than the subject matter itself was how they guided me through it, how they were inspired by it, and I fed off of their energy and their excitement about the material. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, hugely influential still having a human, human at the front of the room, isn't it? Yeah. And having lived and taught through COVID and all the awkwardness and misfires of teaching online and what a challenge it was for both private and public schools. I just saw my son and so many students struggling to connect in this weirdly distant, no pun intended, distant scenario where it's just, you're not in the room, you're not side by side and it, you lose all those nuances, you know, mm -hmm. that are so important. So, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I'm going to, I'm going to sound know. like the, you know, old man, get off my lawn, but I am glad <laughs> I'm 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 grateful that I didn't grow up uh, those formative mm -hmm. years with a smartphone. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Same. I I love the uh, the uh, accessibility of of information now. I can't mm -hmm. imagine not having that. It's yeah. daily. Um, but staring at a phone, I mm -hmm. you know, when you're a kid, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna be captivated by this device in your hand, and yes. And it's, I don't know, man. I like, you know, really, really grateful to have, you know, had a little, like, band with some of my neighborhood friends, playing yeah. kickball in the street. You know, I mean, I'm not saying right. that kids these days aren't doing those things either, but... I think less so. Less Definitely. so, though. Yeah. yeah. You're right. I mean, it, I, I think you call your studio sometimes, is it the great time hole effect or whatever <laughs> uh, it is? The studio time hole effect. The studio... <laughs> now it's the smartphone time yeah. hole effect, yeah. isn't it? Just like, I, I just... I love my phone too, and I love it. It is a Swiss Army knife of innovation and can do so many things. But it is, I think it is giving me low grade anxiety. I think it, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's that fear of missing out or if it's like mm -hmm. that endorphin rush, like, oh my God, what's somebody saying? I got to see this. You yeah. know what I mean? Or, yeah, I've oh, got so much garbage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of it all the time. Um, I've been trying to like wean myself off of Facebook. You know, I don't do the, you know, doom scrolling or, you know, just a endless yeah. scrolling, you know, sometimes it, I, I catch myself and it's, it, it has happened. I was like, mm -hmm. no, <laughs> I've been staring at this thing too long yes. for nothing, you know, and not nothing. I mean, you, the, the, it's some of it's, it's good, but too much of it isn't. Yeah. I just read that uh, Ch the Chinese government, did you see this? They're trying to uh, impose that children, I don't know what, under the age of 13 be limited to one hour of, phone time a day screen time a day wow I, I don't know how they pull that off but yeah, yeah i mean i get it i get it it would have to be built into the device yeah yeah so what else, what's next let's see um healthcare professions although ai can enhance healthcare practices certain profess uh, professions like nursing physical therapy occupational therapy and other patient-centered roles involve direct human interaction empathy and personalized care these aspects of healthcare make it less susceptible to full disruption by AI. That makes mm -hmm. perfect sense. And I don't can't imagine a AI physical therapist being mm -hmm. effective. Although, oh well, yeah. once they take the robotic form, <laughs> dude. I mean, you just sent me a video we watched earlier today, and it was, uh, and I read about this other robot um, that Google's making. I think the one you showed me was Google as well, where the Google, the robotic arm is able to respond to logic through some video language model. Is that the mechanism? Yes. And they can manipulate things with care and identify strange yeah. objects. So, yeah. It, the, the, yeah, the one, the, the one example was uh, they had all these little uh, plastic animals and asking this robotic arm uh, to pick up the animal that is extinct. And there was, mm. a, and it picked up the dinosaur. Yeah. And I read a related article and i can't forget i can't remember who the individual was i want to say that it was the guy from deep mind and uh he said they had a series of robotic arms in a room and they were trying to get it to pick up a, a yellow ball and they gave it x command and waited and nothing really happened and i think they walked away and one of them had figured it out and then they came back later and they all had figured it out Ooh. so it was like 
yeah, I don't know if they were linked together or what, or if they all just have, but so circling back, I do think we're on the cusp of having some robotic therapists. I mean, if they can apply that gentle touch in bedside manner, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah. And the, uh, the, the takeaway is that these, they weren't programmed to, to do these tasks. They were just, mm -hmm. they figured it out one way yeah. or another. Yeah. Yeah. And again, going back to the video you sent me earlier from my, I think it's called AI Explained. Uh, shout out to them. Uh, great, great YouTube channel as well. Yes. Um, ch check that out if you like what you hear on here. Uh, and the, he was talking about how, you, what you just mentioned, they weren't feeding information in for every scenario. It was like they fed some general language in and the robot was able to learn from contingencies. You know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. able to to piece things together. So that's where we're headed. And next up, uh, environmental sciences, fields like environmental conservation, ecological research, and environmental policy involve complex interactions between ecosystems, natural resources, and human activities. These disciplines often require field work, data analysis, and decision-making that involve a deep understanding of the environment and its impact on human societies. And uh, lastly, fine arts and performing arts. Yay! <laughs> yep. Yep. Represent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, majors such as painting, sculpture, music, dance, theater, and other creative arts rely heavily on human imagination, artistic expression, and emotional interpretation. While AI can be used as a tool in creative processes, uh, the unique qualities of human creativity and interpretation make these fields less vulnerable to disruption. Well, that puts a smile on my face. That should also mm -hmm. go into the cheer and beer uh, segment yeah, of the show. Definitely. <laughs> Until you go back and listen to our episode called First It Came for the Artists <laughs> and realize... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this new information has come to light. <laughs> <laughs> We're safe. <laughs> We're safe. You're, you're reminding me, too, when you're talking about how AI can be used as a tool in creative processes. Um, I can't wait to see what people like the Blue Man Group like, have you ever seen that show? Yeah, I did, actually. Yeah, I'd like to see how they evolve and start to incorporate AI in the show and be self-referential like they can be about technology, you know? Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. Um, so along those lines, so that's the good and bad, or, you know, not the good and bad, but the vulnerable uh, career paths and the not-so-vulnerable career paths in the age of AI. Um, another article I saw in on CNBC talks about how white collar jobs are predicted to be eaten by AI as well. So while AI is likely to create new jobs, it's also likely to displace many existing jobs, particularly those that involve repetitive tasks or data analysis. These are the, the high paid CFO positions and the high paid accounting positions and you name it, those are vulnerable. I think we've said in an earlier episode, we thought they would come for the burger flippers first, but mm -hmm. that's not the case, right? Yeah, just the uh, the drive through takeout is, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's come for that <laughs> so far. But. That's it. Um, when we were talking about prepping for the show and we we're talking about education, I kept thinking about this phrase from my favorite Pixar movie, which is The Incredibles. Have you ever seen The Incredibles? I have seen it. Yeah, oh, um, dude, so... dude, it's been a been a long time, but I remember very much enjoying it. I only saw it the one time, but it was great. The best, the yeah. best. I've seen, my kid was growing up when that came out and just seen it, you know, endlessly. But the the villain whose name is Syndrome, <laughs> who is Jace, Jason Lee, by the way, he he's he's on a mission. He's not a super. He Mr. Incredible. And his family, they're all natural supers. They have these <laughs> gifts. They're, you know, whatever the wife is, she's flexible. What's her name? <laughs> Elastigirl. Um, oh, right, right. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Mr. Incredible. Uh, yeah, great. Mr. Incredible. Who is great? That's uh, Craig. God, I can't think of his name, man. Craig, Craig D. Nelson. He's awesome. Oh, okay. <clears throat> anyway, um, Syndrome is like a Batman in that he's making his own devices to become a super himself. And his whole thing is... He's going to make these things and he's going to sell them to everybody. And he says, when everybody is super, no one will be. <laughs> so I was thinking mm. about that line when it comes to college. Hasn't college just become this commodity? I don't know. Is this just kind of gatekeeping? I, I, I don't know how it, and not to come back and beat on college. I just, I don't know how it survives in its current form. And I'm th again, circling back to my own kid. If he's thinking about college after 
uh, high school, like, how do you even consider a college for any major that doesn't have an AI track built in? Mm. If they're not addressing that, how legitimate, how seriously can you take them? Yeah. But that that quote though, when everyone is super, no one will be. That that could that also uh, applies to once humans are augmented, like we were talking about in the last episode with the yes bionic man kind of arm and that kind of thing. Right. Uh, same statement applies. Exactly. Once we reach excellency, <laughs> excellency, right? <laughs> well, there's another word too. It's like equivalence or something. I can't think of the name of the. There's another phrase in there. Um. So. Unpopular opinion. I do think college is going the way of the dodo if it can't evolve. Um, like I said, certs and apprenticeships, that kind of stuff is going to be the way forward. I think it's going to be like, I was so impressed when you just told me you didn't go to college because I know how brilliant you are and how capable you are. I always say, Larry, and you know, I speak of you and about you to other people. And this is a testament to how amazing you are. I always say, I know a little about a lot of stuff, but there's this guy, he knows a lot about a lot of stuff. And that's you, man. Like you, you are a connoisseur of all things. And I say that in the context of this, because it's in you, it's in you. It doesn't depend on a four year bricks and mortar education. You had the passion and the curiosity and you sought out the resources. You curated your own way forward. You know what I mean? So I think, and that's, that's available so much now to everyone you did all that pre in the pre-internet age you know what i mean well like thanks you, you that's found, really yeah. generous of you generous statement and i would i would say i know a lot about a few things uh, <laughs> and those are those are the things i'm passionate about as soon as i'm if i'm passionate about something then i go i go all in and and i, right. I gotta i gotta learn every last detail about it yeah i love that about you that's amazing I mean, just so the listeners at home know, here's a couple of things that maybe you're not aware of. So Larry wrote the, wrote and performed, engineered the opening music to our show. He engineers every show. It makes us sound good because I'm a, I'm a knucklehead. I send him some crappy garage band file and he makes it sound. By the way, we're 4,000 miles apart when we record this. So he makes it sound and I'm in like some bouncy hard surface room. He makes it sound like we're sitting four feet away from each other in the same space. So yeah, you are amazing, my friend. Well, right back at you, brother. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, by the way, I was telling you earlier that I make predictions and sometimes I'm wrong. And I like to say that I may be early, but I'm not wrong, but I am wrong. And I say that as a side note, because I taught STEM topics for 16 years. And I used to tell my students, everybody and their mother's going to have a 3D printer in their house soon. You'll see that was 10, 15 years ago. Nobody has them. Do you have one? No, but it is something where I'm just like, why don't I have one? And like a guy in my homebrew club, um, uh, you know, I, I use a pH meter and uh, in, in brewing, and it's it's clumsy. It's you know, mm -hmm. you have the meter; it's a little electronic thing, and there's two wires, one for the pH probe and one for the temperature probe, and they always get tangled, and it's just clumsy to use. And he 3D printed this wonderful stand for the meter and there's a thing on the back to coil up the wires there's a little thing to put a, a small beaker in there i mean mm -hmm. it's it's beautifully designed and super functional and he printed one for me and it's great so cool and i'm like i would love to have something like that because i like the 3d modeling aspect of it and to be able to uh, turn that into a physical object is super cool and really the thing that the only thing that has held me back is like they kind of take up a lot of space, you know, there's no, mm -hmm. you know, they're not huge or anything, but I've got some, I've got limited space here and I'm like, where, where am I going to store one more thing that I can't really just fold up and put in a box, but I, I'm going to end up with one at some point. They are incredible. And I, I think for a lot of people still, it's a bit of a drawback in that it is a still a fairly high maintenance, delicate machine. Mm. It's not it's not quite ready for prime time. Like even after all this development, it's gotten immensely easier, but you know, unless you're okay with, you know, cleaning out the print head and trying to figure out why the extruder is not moving or why things aren't at the right temp or, you know, it's definitely still a kind of a maker subset, uh, curiosity. I, See, I don't know when. Yeah. Th that's the stuff I don't know about. And you do <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I, yeah. yeah, I was just like, Oh, I'm just going to use this thing. Yeah. But yeah, it's, just how finicky inkjet printers can be, I would imagine this has got similar uh, similar issues. 
It, it does. Yeah. I mean, somebody like you, you'd find your way around it, no problem. But I think the average consumer is like, I just want to print out a picture frame or whatever, you know? So anyway, I digress. Um, with all that said, and talking about, again, the focus of this is education. And I mentioned my son, and this goes for every young person out there who's maybe in high school, and maybe you have a kid that's in high school. Like, I really feel like there has to be a self-guided parallel track of education that goes along with high school. Because I can't tell you how often my son comes home from school and I'm not disparaging the school he goes to. It's a great school and he's got great teachers, but I think it's kind of an artifact of being 15. And maybe you were like this too, Lara, but like he's, I'm like, well, how's your, how's your day? He's like, it's boring, didn't learn anything, <laughs> didn't do anything, same stuff. But I'm like, all right, so, and I'll ask him, are you learning this about, you know, possible relevant technologies? And like, oftentimes he's not. So I'm like, okay, so we got to find these things for you and carve out this new track that's really going to make you uh marketable because as you said or you know we touched upon like y you're gonna have to kind of curate your own path you're gonna have to make a portfolio of your projects that you know you host on github or maybe you collaborated on an artificial intelligence project that you you did all these um kind of took these ai technologies and you created something new or i just feel like that's what can, can, what it's going to come down to is going to be an employer is going to look at you and it's almost going to be a badge of honor where they can be like oh cool larry you didn't go to college you saved yourself two hundred thousand to four hundred thousand dollars nice job man you're the kind of guy i want you're the kind of guy i want on my team who's going to save my department that kind of money because you're finding other ways to solve that problem so i think that's what it's going to come down to but i could be wrong mm. i don't know so with that said, um, here are the pros and cons of AI as it embeds itself in education. In case you're in the field, in case you're raising a kid or you're just curious about how this stuff can affect the education space, here are the pros. Number one, I'm not even gonna say numbers, personalized learning. So you can take student data, I can analyze Larry's um, you know, progress, and I can suggest some supplemental um, enrichment activities. Intelligent tutoring system, AI-powered tutor, virtual tutors offer real-time feedback and support to students, which I think is the way forward. Uh, automated grading and feedback, take out some of the, you know, the grunt work of being a teacher, having to, that's the worst part of being a teacher, having to grade stuff. I mean, just, for for the and I'm not even a classroom teacher in the elementary school like my wife is and I know your wife is a a former teacher herself, um, so that was never fun having to do that stuff because it's so time consuming and it's really hard to to apply grades to things because there's so many other factors involved. Enhanced content creation AI helps educators generate customized education materials. You can bang out a scope and a sequence for a course in no time flat. I I do online course design and I can go in there. In fact, I did this in one of our pre previous episodes. I said, make a, a fragrance training course for a fragrance uh, manufacturing company. And literally in 30 seconds, I forget what it was called. Tome was the platform that made this uh, PowerPoint like presentation for me. So boom, you could do that for your classrooms. Early intervention and learning support for kids who maybe have IEPs and 504s. Um, identify struggling students early on, offers targeted interventions, personalized. It always comes back to personalized solutions. Language learning, translation, adaptive assessment, that's gonna be the way forward too. Larry learns at a different pace that I do, than I do. I need a little more time. I need a different scenario. Maybe I like to learn at home. Maybe Larry's okay learning in the classroom. Smart classrooms, AI optimizes the learning environment and assists teachers with administrative tasks. Data analysis for institutional improvement, big picture stuff, AI in special ed. Listen, everybody, in, you, if you teach, you know, uh, AI, IEPs have become more mainstream than not. So everybody has some sort of specialized um, need in their room. So those are the pros of uh, utilizing AI in a classroom in a really quick kind of nutshell view. And with the pros, there are cons. Uh, privacy and data security. AI in education requires the collection and analysis of vast amounts of student data. Ensuring the privacy and security of this data is crucial as it could be vulnerable to breaches and misuse. Uh, bias and fairness. AI algorithms can inadvertently perpetuate existing biases present in mm. the data they are trained on. This could lead to unfair treatment or discrimination against certain student groups, reinforcing existing educational inequalities. Wow. 
Yeah. After all, it's trained by humans with their inherent biases, right? So mm-hmm. they're going to kind of find their way in there. We're going to talk about something later on. But yeah, sorry, go ahead. And uh, uh, over-reliance on technology. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> we were <laughs> just talking about that. Entire podcast, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, excessive dependence on AI technology might lead to reduced human interaction and personal connections between students and teachers, which can be essential for social and emotional mm-hmm. development. Uh, We already have that with smartphones. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, Loss of jobs, the automation of certain educational tasks through AI, such as grading and administrative duties, may lead to job displacement for some educators and support staff. Mm. Equality issues, not all schools and students may have equal access to AI-powered educational resources and technology, leading to further disparities between privileged and underprivileged students, the digital divide. Lack of creativity and critical thinking, relying heavily on AI-guided learning paths could di- could diminish opportunities for students to think critically, problem-solve independently, and explore creativity. Yeah, if I can interject there, yeah, I yeah, think that's no. the, the, the one thing that teachers are really afraid of right there. They feel like the kids are just going to outsource their brains to these platforms. But I think the answer, uh, from my perspective, is I think you make the, the, make the students use these platforms and show the breadcrumb trail of creativity. How did you use it? Show me the evidence. Show me the collaboration. I want to see what you did when you got that feedback from ChatGPT. Where did you take that? Did you revise it? Did you edit it? Did you then take it and put it into mid-journey? What was the output there? What was your response? You know what I mean? I think you need to see more of the process. Show your work. Show your work, kids. Yep. Uh, Ethical concerns. AI-generated content might raise questions about plagiarism and intellectual property rights, blurring the lines of academic integrity. Limited Mm. understanding of AI, teachers and students may face challenges in understanding and effectively using AI technology, hindering its full potential for educational benefits. Mm -hmm. High implementation costs. Integrating AI into educational institutions can be expensive, making it challenging for some schools to adopt these advancements. Overemphasis on standardized testing, AI's ability to automate grading might lead to overemphasis to an overemphasis on standardized testing, potentially neglecting other important aspects of holistic education. Yeah, so lots of hurdles, and I definitely gravitated toward the point you mentioned about limited understanding of AI. I know teachers have a lot on their plates. I've taught teachers as long as I've taught students, and technology is for many very challenging and a lot of them are technophobes uh, especially those who are not digital natives as they call them um so a lot of hand holding a lot of professional development a lot of uh, reinforcement and scaffolding is needed for this stuff to be successfully pulled off in the classroom along those lines and listen we could go on about this i could go on about this all day um, because it's really near and dear to my heart and and in ways like in previous episodes larry you're talking about music and being so near and dear to you and movie making, et cetera, like this stuff I could go on about and sermonize about for ages. And I'm hoping in the future we can get some other voices from this sphere in here to kind of combat my doom and gloom perspective on some of it. Um, but I did want to mention this, that the ISTE conference, which is the International Society for Tech Educators, I think it took place in Philadelphia in, at the end of June, they had a panel and they came up with seven guidelines uh, to prepare educators for teaching with AI. In the, in the interest of time, I'm going to condense that to one point. And that is, as we mentioned earlier, upskill, upskill, upskill. There's a thousand new courses out there, Google, Microsoft, Coursera, LinkedIn. Get on them. Understand what generative AI is. and arm yourself with this stuff that's really what these seven bullet points all have in common i'm not going to bore you with the rest of them um which brings us to of course this week in mid journey larry what's happening out there uh they had a uh, office hours update uh yesterday august 2nd uh and just a quick recap is uh we're still waiting on version 5.3 uh well it's ready but they're still waiting on discord to uh um update the UI to accommodate the in-painting uh, feature. Mm. Um, so it will include in-painting and a new style, as, uh, some new style aesthetic. So that sounds interesting. Uh, release date, maybe about two weeks. Uh, mm. Version 6, uh, had a candidate for version 6. It's better, but want, but they want it even better uh, before the release. Uh, uh, more coherent, visually more diverse, better understanding, uh, working on making it more responsive to text. 
Uh, instead of shipping out a more conservative version 6, they're waiting to ship out a much better and bigger version 6 release date about a few weeks. Still, still, <laughs> you know, <laughs> these are short timelines, so it's great. Yeah, th that's always about a few weeks. We'll yeah. get it. Um, <laughs> Have they fixed the hatchet problem? That's what I want to know. <laughs> that was not mentioned in this one, <laughs> but uh, maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll raise my voice. I'll, I'll get involved on the next one and, and, and please and say that the internet is clamoring for better hatchets. <laughs> Um, uh, the website, uh, working on the standalone website, uh, the biggest question at the moment is how much social stuff to put in and how much to change the front page. A lot mm. is getting better. Uh, thinking about what the rollout of the new website will look like. Mobile app, uh, they're testing it. Uh, native uh, iOS app coming, non-native Android app coming. Website will also work on mobile. Uh, uh, updating their data centers, um, image generation could still be faster, thinking about how to do it, faster computers, but a limited amount, possibly trying faster image generation sometime in the next month to make I image generation a lot faster for pro and mega tier users. Um, they don't have enough mm. uh, compute to make it faster for all the tiers. Uh, and what do you have? What are you, are you a pro user? What no, you? no, I'm still like I'm I'm on the on the ten dollar a month plan, and uh, more frequently than not, I need to purchase a few extra hours towards the end end of the month. But so far, that that seems to be covering it for me. Um, mm. And uh, oh, and this is kind of cool. Uh, the, you know, they're starting to do some surveys, um, and. Um, and they said the new website um, will have surveys in the future, and when you participate, you'll get a free GPU hour. Uh, but cool. for but for now, you can participate on Discord. I'm just not sure if you still get the you know the the, the free GPU hour or not. But that's cool. And I got my Mid Journey magazine in the mail today, and put Ooh. a big smile on my face. I haven't paged through it yet though, because I was a little limited on time when I got home. But looking forward to that later. Super cool. And as always, there is a lot going on in the news. I can't wait to hear what Raina has to say. Thanks, boys. Hold on to your night vision goggles because scientists at Purdue University are cooking up some serious predator-like magic. They've unleashed a brand new thermal imaging tech that lets AI see through pitch darkness like it's high noon. This futuristic sorcery uses a super fancy sensor to detect thermal radiation with precision, crafting detailed images of objects in complete darkness. Talk about next-level search and rescue missions, top-notch surveillance, and military ops. A team of Smarty Pants psychologists from UCLA gave GPT-3 some brain teasers, and guess what? It tackled them as well as a college student. But hold your digital horses. It's still a mystery how these AI geniuses do their cognitive dance. The researchers are on a quest to unravel the secrets of GPT-3's reasoning magic and how it can boost human brain power. The future is coming to a temple near you. According to the American Psychological Association, AI preachers like the Mindar humanoid robot are giving sermons on Buddhist principles, complete with surround sound and multimedia magic. But these silicon sermonizers might not be as convincing as their human counterparts. Research shows that people find robot preachers less credible, leading to smaller donations and a drop in congregation commitment. It's a holy showdown between humans and machines— the word wizards from the University of California, Berkeley, and the University of Washington have been brewing up some text-detecting magic. However, their AI-powered detectors might be playing some sneaky tricks. These detectors are falsely calling out articles from non-native English speakers as AI-generated, which could cause serious trouble for job seekers and college applicants. AI bias is definitely a cause for concern. And lastly, in AI-adjacent news... Chinese scientists just dropped a video that could be the key to unlocking the mythical superconductor, the holy grail of physics. Imagine electricity flowing without losing any energy. If they crack the code on this mysterious LK99 phenomenon, we could revolutionize energy transmission, transportation, and who knows what else. Pair this breakthrough with quantum computing and the world is ours. Um, uh, I mean, yours, of course. That's all the news for now. Back to you, gentlemen. Oh, boy. Glad, glad Raina, you know, got it right in the end there. <laughs> good, good catch. <laughs> Some interesting articles in the news, man. I mean, just the convergence of AI with religion and what that means. Um, and the other thing about the AI bias in those detectors brings me back to what I wanted to mention in a classroom. And I'll, I'll shut up in a minute. The... Um, 
the fact that teachers are like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Kids are going to just build their essays in chat GPT and I'm never going to know. Can I use this AI detection, AI detection software and I'll just drop their essay in there and I'll be able to tell. Well, apparently for, for the most part, AI detection software doesn't work at all. In fact, I read that chat GPT or open AI is abandoning that effort too. So, but I want to circle back to the religion thing. How, what do you think about that? Um, first of all, I'm surprised that it's the Buddhists that are leading the way on this. Yeah, I, who would have thought? Yeah, and I don't know. I kind of think. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a churchgoer. Um, Same. And uh, but I would think uh, many. I, I would think people who are who are would not really be welcoming of you know they they want a human interaction there. Mm-hmm. So so yeah, I, I can I can I, I get the pushback on that, and they're not throwing uh, donations in the. In, in the coffers. In the coffers. I, I do think it's going to evolve, though, if this is going the way that they say it is to A G I A S I and it becomes this omniscient, omnipotent presence. Isn't it going to give? Isn't it going to give rise to some cult of AI and they're going to regard it as a religious entity? Well, the, those people would welcome it. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. I, th- I know. I think we're just early in that kind of that curve. I think it's. I think it's going to be there. I would have put that as a job profession that was safe, you know, from, from AI for the same, like yeah. emotional human interaction type of thing. Yeah. Getting crazy out there. I was trying not to say crazy. <laughs> Our mutual friend, Steve called me out on that. He's like, you say crazy, like every episode, man. And I'm like, I can't help it. <laughs> it's it's, not it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> it <is. laughs> Um, so a couple other things, this, I think is the first time we have to actually mention a correction that I'm aware of, but I'm still not a hundred percent sure if it's, if it is a correction or not, but it sa- it it sounds like it probably is. <laughs> but go ahead, yeah. go ahead. Last week we mentioned that a South Park a, a group of researchers apparently had been able to con- concoct a South Park episode using some sort of generative AI feeding in, you know, some video content, voice. It, it apparently made everything from beginning to end. But I, I don't know. Maybe you came across some source that kind of questions its, questions its authenticity. Yeah. Yeah. The the article I, I, I saw was on uh, thedecoder.com and it says AI generated South Park episode may be a hoax. And, um, you know, some of the names that are credited uh, with with this uh, group that made this. Are... I, IP Daily. IP Daily is on there. <laughs> yeah, not quite that <laughs> obvious, but uh, uh, but uh, members listed appear to be familiar references to well-known figures in history. Although Fable Studios uh, lists a phone number on its website, the company cannot be reached at that number. It sends mm. you directly to voicemail. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, short version is, yeah, there's there's a few, few uh you know, suspect elements here that, that sure that reek of Bart Simpson. <laughs> it's Call, right. calling Moe's Tavern. Yeah. I mean, you go on the website and it's like you know, there's a whole like process analysis and you know all this white stuff. paper. Yeah, yeah. And, and I would think uh, I don't know. I have to we'll have to dig into it uh, more. And but I would think if it if it wasn't a hoax, they would be quite vocal at this point. Automating a, a, a South Park episode is, you know, pretty impressive. So. It is. Yeah. And frankly, I'm surprised that we haven't gotten more things wrong. Maybe we have. I just because of tidal wave of information and <laughs> yeah. where it all comes from. Um, and I, I wrote here in the notes. Sometimes we hallucinate too. Yes. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> if you catch good. us, if there's something that you know we're wrong about, please let us know. Um, I want to mention here. We talked to uh, Reina talked about bias uh, being detected in some LLMs. Did you see this piece where a girl was dealing with, I don't know if it's ChatGPT and then eventually MidJourney, but it was, I want you to take my image, my reference image of a portrait of me and make it more professional. And she went from herself as an Asian woman to a blonde, blue-eyed girl as a more professional headshot. Oops. Oops. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think it's probably not some evil bias that's built into it. You know, it's just luck of the draw. It's a randomly, I mean, it all yeah. starts with a random seed, mm-hmm. you know, but, um, but yeah, I can see how she would not be pleased. Yeah. And I saw this other thing, because every day, every day, Larry, you know, there's 10,000 news items um, about AI. Did you see this? We we're talking about a week or so ago, Justine Bateman had this series of tweets about the perils of being an actor in the AI age. 
Disney apparently in very recent past had extras on a film set. I don't know what what movie they were making, but they would pull them when they were done with their scene as an extra. Um, they would pull them into a trailer and say, "I need you for the next two hours, and I need you to stand here in front of this screen, and I need you to look angry or happy or sad. Great, keep going, keep going." Basically, they were scanning them for their AI library and not compensating them, not getting consent. So now there's a big uproar, and there's this whole group of people who are part of that extra crowd. Mm. Those mean, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, I guess if if those things were were only to be used in that film that they signed on for, and they got compensated appropriately for, you know, I, I just just off the cuff like the amount of time that they they saved or, or just just having the insurance of having those images to composite later, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, it certainly warrants extra compensation in both cases. Yeah. Yep. Um, and in the same space. You shared with me earlier some of your experiments with Runway, which is a text to video platform. Do you want to describe some of that? Yeah, Runway does a lot of things. Um, I first got introduced to it, uh, I don't know, it's probably four years, three years ago, something like that. Found a bunch of, I might, I might have mentioned this already, but I found a bunch of old pictures in my dad's house when we were clearing out his house and, um, um, and uh, some black and white pictures of him and, um, uh, his brother, my uncle, and and uh, my grandfather, his dad, and uh, standing on the beach or in the woods or whatever. And I forget how I even found Runway. I, it's Runway ML. Because um, mm-hmm. I wasn't necessarily looking... I don't know, maybe I was looking to try, like, oh, I wonder what this would look like colorized. You know, I'm, I, I prefer the black and white, but just as an interesting thing to try. And I landed on there, and they had they had all these different, basically still image things. Uh, I don't think there was much in video at the time, and it did a remarkable job of colorizing these pictures. Like it knew on the beach picture, it knew to make the sand the right color, the ocean the right color. It it because it you know it recognized what the eight yeah. elements of the picture were. But anyway, they've continued to uh, evolve in a big way, and um, uh, I follow. Um, I'm uh, it's the official Mid Journey Facebook group. And uh, I, I wish I remembered her name, um, but there's a, there's a woman that had she started posting some uh, videos that she, she she started with a Mid Journey image, and then she brought it into Runway, and Runway has text to video where you can just type in a prompt, just like Mid Journey or any of Stable Diffusion, all of those, um, and it'll make like a four second video, um, or you can start with an image any image and it's it's still it's using the same thing if you do the the text to video it gives you four still images uh you choose one and then it generates a video from it so it's 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 all working the or, same. or you can feed it your own reference image right like i saw right. you do okay yeah and the the ones this, this person posted on on uh, facebook were very impressive and uh so anyway i signed up and they they give you a free trial like they give you you have credits and i guess you can use it for any of their tools in there uh different things require different amounts of credits and um i think it's like five credits for one second of video or something like that Mm. i don't know but uh anyway so i took a couple of my mid-journey images and and ran them through there and uh you know it is not perfect by any means it's uh it's a little uh, you saw the you saw the videos, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, there's, there's yeah cats playing heavy metal and <laughs> your circuit board cat walking, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's a little glitchy, but it's still like it's a good start, man. It's it's yeah, there it there it's gonna it's gonna evolve quickly, but it's just amazing that it can even do that at all. Um, yeah. So yeah, super super cool. That that's also my uh, AI spotlight um, this week. Cool. And along those lines, uh, you shared with me, uh, I think it was you shared it with me, or maybe I found it, uh, was the Barbie Oppenheimer movie that was generated through Runway. Yeah. Did you share that with me? Uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think I did, but it's all over the place now. Cause it was, obviously, oh, it is. Yeah. Which is generated with Runway, and it's, as it sounds, it's a combination <laughs> of Barbie and Oppenheimer <laughs> and, you know, pink atomic bomb explosions yeah, and Barbie uh, showing you how to build a build a bomb you know <laughs> in her workshop tinkering yeah yeah, yeah. that's amazing and it, I mean it's only what 15 seconds yeah, long or something yeah, yeah, yeah but it's still it's really cool 
Um, which leads us, uh, we only got a couple, couple more minutes left. We're going to wrap it up with doom and gloom. And then, of course, counter that with some cheer and beer. What's on the doom and gloom scene? Oh, uh, well, there was a recent interview with Sam Altman um, from uh, OpenAI. And, um, yeah, this is, they were asking him uh, what his thoughts are, the chances are of things going really badly. And um, he said, First of all, I think that whether the chance of existential calamity is 0.5% or 50%, we should still take it seriously. Mm -hmm. I don't have an exact number, but I'm closer to the 0.5 than the 50. As to how it might happen, he seems most worried about AIs getting quite good at designing and manufacturing pathogens, and with reason. In June, an AI at MIT uh, suggested four viruses that could ignite a pandemic then wow. pointed a specific research on genetic uh, mutations that could make them rip through a city more quickly. Wow. Yeah. Um, around the same time, a group of chemists connected a similar AI directly to a robotic chemical synthesizer, and it designed and synthesized a molecule on its own. Mm. Um, and uh, Altman worries that some misaligned future model will spin up a pathogen that spreads rapidly, incubates undetected for weeks, and kills half its victims. So that sounds mm. pretty doom and gloom. Yeah, it's so doomy and it's so gloomy. <laughs> I mean, what, what a premise for a sci-fi movie. Like, half the population just drops dead in the street, and you have no idea where it came from. Yep. Wow. Yep. And then, I um, believe I'm pronouncing this somewhere in the ballpark of correctness, but uh, Ilya Sutskever. Uh, chief scientist at OpenAI Open AI on solving uh, alignment. Uh, he referred to it as the final boss of humanity. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Uh, um, he said, I don't think the general public has quite awakened to what's happening. A global race to the AI future has begun, and it's largely proceeding without oversight or restraint. If people in America want to have some say in what the future will be like, in what that future will be like, and how quickly it arrives, we would be wise to speak up soon. And that reminded me of a recent mm. Facebook comment that I got <laughs> when I, I posted a link to our show. Uh, and the comment was, hot take, AI is like blockchain, it will fizzle. <laughs> Gone. Yeah. Where's the buzzer sound? Right. Where's your, we need a bank of sounds. <laughs> um, now, was this the guy, Ilya, or was it a guy or girl? I don't know if that's a feminine guy. name or not. So he's the one in front of the Senate panel that I saw. There was a video of him or no? Uh, well, I saw a guy who was from Anthropic uh, talking uh, to... Because his sentiment was very similar to yes. what uh, yes, you, it you was, just yeah. read. He yeah, was like, we got to do something now. Yes. Yeah, that was a guy from Anthropic, which uh, makes Claude. Mm -hmm. um, did you sign up for that? I tried to I sign did, up for it. Yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. I played with it a little bit. I could use a VPN. I forgot to do that. Um, yeah, crazy apocalyptic stuff. Yeah, uh, and there's, there's one, one more. Um, yeah, <laughs> more doom. Uh, yeah, Jan Leike, I think, L-E-I-K-E, -E, uh, Leike, uh, head of alignment at OpenAI. So mm, that's a good alignment. That's a good department. That's the term I was looking for, alignment. Yeah. Um, he said, I personally think fast takeoff is reasonably likely, and Oof. we should definitely be prepared for it to happen. And if it doesn't happen, I'm happy about that. Mm. And takeoff refers to the time it takes a system to go from being roughly at a human level of intelligence to being strongly super intelligent or vastly greater than contemporary humanity's combined intellectual wherewithal. Uh, wow. So slow occurs over the timescale of decades or centuries. Fast, mm -hmm. what he's referring to, occurs over the timescale of minutes, hours, or days. Wow. Yeah, and I, I saw that part too, and that was really the one that scared me the most. And having watched Terminator 3 last night, did I talk about this already? Terminator yeah. 3 is on Netflix, and of course I'm obsessed with all this stuff now, and it's landing in a different place in my brain. But if you recall in Terminator 3, they show you that when they flip the switch on Skynet, and they literally turn the switch on, and you have fast takeoff, as described here, and 30 seconds later, the future comes crashing through the windows, you know, in the form of these cyborgs, etc. Not that that's going to happen necessarily with fast takeoff, but it seemed very prescient. Mm. Mm -hmm. But... We'll move on to cheer and beer, which is a quote from the same guy, <laughs> yeah. same head of alignment at OpenAI. And so they have a plan. 
to you know for, for alignment and he said our plan is <laughs> it starts off with him saying our plan is somewhat crazy <laughs> in the sense that we want to use ai to solve the problem that we are creating by building ai uh, wow but i think it is actually the best plan that we have and i think it's a pretty good plan and i think it's likely to succeed Oh, I mean, there's a lot of things and maybes and, you know, <laughs> and it's pretty good. It's pretty good. No money back guarantee on this. But uh, I like that this guy is saying he thinks it's likely to succeed. That gives yeah. me some comfort. It's just so paradoxical and strange, isn't it? It's uh, how do you untangle that? I'm using AI to solve the future problems that AI is going to create for me. Had I not had I not touched AI in the first place, <laughs> this would not have been a problem. Yeah, the fact that that all these people are very quick to say the problem we're making, you know, they're referring it to it that way. I'm like, you think they're being like, they'd be like, no, everything's fine, it's gonna be fine. You know, well, maybe this is them. You know, maybe that is that that stance right now, that posture. Yeah. But. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. So we gave her AI spotlight. That was a runway ML machine learning, I guess. Our shout out, as mentioned earlier, is to AI Explained on YouTube. Check them out. Our listener question we'll leave you with. Given that this was initially about education, what do you think schools and colleges can do to stay relevant in the age of AI? What can students do now to prepare for a drastically different workplace? It's coming. It's going to be different. The AI, The white collar jobs are getting eaten. So... You know, for your young aspiring lawyers and accountants, what's plan B? Anything else, my friend? No, I think uh, I think we covered. Well, we certainly didn't cover it all, but and we covered no, a lot. There's of it. always more. Yep. yep. As always, if you like what you hear, subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform. Follow us on Facebook. Throw us a rating, please. We'd really appreciate it, and we'll see you next week. This has been up against reality. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to hear future episodes and be sure to follow us on social media for all things AI. Until next time, stay human, people.